My father grew up during the Great Depression. I was five years old the first time I remember going down to the Lower East Side to see the tenement building where he grew up. I grew up in the 1970s New York City, at a time when Hare Krishna danced in the parks, drug dealers dealt dope, unafraid of consequences, Times Square was filled with pimps, prostitutes, and thieves. Back then, that was normal New York City for me. Almost every Saturday, my dad and I would ride the graffiti-covered subway from Queens to Manhattan. Bright, multicolored names like Blade and Cliff would cover an entire subway car. Sometimes all the kids would explain that they knew particular graffiti artists. As a child, I thought this was the most awesome thing. To me, the spray-painted cars were well, like cathedral glass, filtering sunlight into colors onto subway walls. On days when we visit the Lower East Side, we'd get off at the ERF train at West 4th Street. The station had black paper where ads were supposed to be. Often they were filled with chalk drawings by Keith Haring. We'd walk down 8th Street to St. Mark's Place. My father would point out the building where the Polish National Hall once stood, where my parents met. Now there's a Chipotle in place. We'd walk to the burned out streets known as Alphabet City. In the early 70s, the brick tenements were mostly abandoned. Many buildings were hollow shells. Sunlight shone through the tenement spaces where windows wouldn't stood. Other buildings had cinder blocks or wooden boards for windows, and some were occupied by squatters. My father would always stop in front of his building on 12th Street and Avenue B. It was an ominous, dark, brick, six-story row house. He would tell me, if I didn't go to college, we would never be living in our home in Queens. Our home in Maspeth was a two-family house that he renovated into a one-family so that each of his four children would have their own bedroom. He was so proud of this house on the block with the largest lot and the two-car garage. My father didn't drive. <laughs> My father was extremely poor during the Depression. He told me stories about how his mother worked as a janitor of their building so they could live rent-free. His family struggled, and sometimes the only food they had came from soup kits. He hardly ever talked about his father. But when he did, he would say, he was good for nothing. He was a bum. He never worked a day in his life. Nitty-gritty in New York City was always a part of my journey. And every time I went to a public park, I could see drug dealers displaying pills and baggies, foil packets, and pot out in the open. This upset my father. I remember always begging him to take me to Washington Square Park because at that time they had the newest playground in New York City. He was always reluctant but always gave in. And every time we entered that park, more than one drug dealer would surround us, him holding a five-year-old child and show him their goods. This really upset my father and he hurried me along. I think this is why I walk fast today. He went to his neighborhood several times a year. My father to remind himself how far he came and for me to show me how good I had it. He was proud when he told me how he found out he got into the City University of New York. Names were posted on a piece of paper and hung in school. He told me, we got there, me and my cousin Stanley, was, it was a madhouse. There were so many people trying to look at this piece of paper. I couldn't even get near it. But somehow my cousin Stanley was able to get near it. And he said, your name's there. I see it. Oh, my name's there too. We made it. We got in. Then my father said, I never saw my name on that piece of paper. I don't really know if it was even there. My father hardly ever talked about my grandfather. But when he did, I always got a feeling that he had been a really mean man. To this day, I am still horrified when I recall a story my dad told me. He said, we had a cat that had kittens once, and right after they were born, my father scooped them up and flushed them down the toilet. My father and I continued to travel to the city. As I got older, the grit of the city became more apparent. The graffiti that covered the subways, parks, and walls, and buildings started to look less and less like art, and more like the vandalism it was. But something about those visits to my dad's birthplace on 12th Street and Avenue B got under my skin. I didn't know what college was at five years old, but now I have three college degrees. Thank you.